Hello to all YouTubers out there and welcome to another one of my videos by New York Stilo. And today we're going to talk about marine aquarium lighting. We're going to talk about reef aquarium lighting in detail. And uh, briefly, I just wanted to say that I released a video on reef aquarium lighting sometime about six months ago. It did fairly well. The video had about 35,000 views and counting. But, you know, some of the information in there was not enough to satisfy some of you out there who have been asking me lots of questions about um, different types of lighting. I mean, you know, uh, compact fluorescence, T5s, metal halides, LED light systems. There's lots of hype with LED light systems and I will talk about LED light systems towards the end of the video. You know, I'm gonna give you guys my two cents on what I believe and unfortunately I don't have an LED light system to show you guys, but, um, you know, the information I'm going to relay to you guys in the video is based on online research that I've done, you know, and word of mouth through some of my friends who do have LED, uh, uh, LED light systems. So, before I start breaking down each, um, each one of these different fixtures here, you know, and, you know, what I want to do is, uh, you know, I want to discuss a little bit about the watts per gallon. You know, there's a lot of uh, people out there including myself, who generally try to use watts per gallon as a rule of thumb to discuss whether or not you have proper wattage or proper lighting for your corals. And um, what we want to try to achieve when, uh, when it comes to reef aquarium lighting, we want to try to achieve the power of the sun. We want to try to replicate that to a T. And watts per gallon is a good way to go to give you a general idea of whether or not you have plenty of light but what really comes into play when you choose a particular light fixture is the par the par and the lumens that a particular bulb is going to give you is what really is going to tell you if you're on the right track now par par for par stands for photosynthetically active radiation so, the higher a bulb has in par, the more the coral is going to be able to photosynthesize and uh, have beautiful colors and grow and stuff like that. The great thing about corals, quickly, is that they adapt, you know? If you have different type of lighting, their color is going to change, but the coral is going to try to survive as long as you offer it high output lighting. So the coral might actually end up being brown, you know, sometime near the future. Or it might end up being, if you got a red coral, for example, if it doesn't end up being brown because of lack of lighting, then it'll end up being a, bi a, a really vibrant type of red. So par is very important, but for this video and for many of you who have been asking me questions, I'm going I'm, I'm to use watts per gallon. You know, to really try to get uh, that information to you guys. Now, one thing that is important to understand when you talk about watts per gallon is that if you, if you have, say, 5 watts per gallon for a particular system, once you, you start adding actinic bulbs, you're going to lose a lot of par. So the watts per gallon, so to speak, is, is a lot lower than what it should be. So that's another point to take into consideration when using watts per gallon. And this is another reason why it is best to really look at a particular bulb's par to really decide whether or not you should get that bulb. But here we are. We're going to break down uh, some of these lighting systems quickly. And the first lighting system, I'm going to make this really, really fast. Stay away from this lighting system, guys. This lighting system is a standard 30-watt fluorescent um, freshwater light system. I've gotten lots of questions online. Uh, you know, well, I just started a system. Uh, can I use these lights uh, for my live rock only? And the answer is no, because this light is going to promote nuisance type algae. You know, you want to get that high par, um, lots of watts per gallon so that you can be really successful in uh, getting that coralline color and uh, some of the life uh, to recome to return back to the rock, you know, considering that it's been out of the water for a while. So stay away from this lighting system. Next, we're going to look at this 
lighting system here which is your high output compact fluorescent lighting fixtures. Now lots of questions have been asked about this particular lighting system. Does it, I, I, the number one question is can I keep corals in um, this type of lighting system? The answer is yes. But if we're using watts per gallon, once again, you're going to need a lot of watts. Particularly, I recommend 5 watts per gallon if you really want to try to keep the majority of uh, corals. And I would, say, I would say 5 watts per gallon, if not 7 watts per gallon, if you really want to be successful. Seriously, guys. You know, five. you can even have 3 watts per gallon. But if you have 3 watts per gallon, I really doubt that you're going to be able to keep SPS corals alive with this type of lighting. Seriously, guys. LPS corals um, and mushrooms and, uh, you know, softies and leathers, absolutely. Three watts per gallon should do the trick. SPSs should not be going into your system or you will either see them bleach or turn brown. Now, the next lighting fixture here is your uh, high output your standard uh, T5 light fixture. Now the great thing about T5s is that um, the bulbs are much skinnier and they're actually less expensive than compact fluorescents. But if you were to take the two and try to compare them, I would say that you're gonna get, you're gonna get close to about the same amount of par out of the compact fluorescent bulb and the T5 fixture. So when it comes to that, you know, whether you decide to go with compact fluorescents, you know, or T5s, you get, generally, you're going to get about the same results. The only one up that uh, T5s has over uh, compact fluorescents is the simple fact that, you know, some of the bulbs are a lot less expensive. And the fact that the bulb is a lot skinnier allows the fixture to have um, individual reflectors. And this is actually a plus in a sense because when you have a lighting system such as this one here which has just one reflector for one bulb and each each compact fluorescent bulb has two bulbs in a sense you know the light is being distributed all over the place you know but when you have individual reflectors with the t5 lighting system you can direct that um that par and that light output directly down into the tank which is one what you want to do and the light is not being reflected all over the place so can you keep corals with these two types of lighting absolutely generally you want to try to go five watts or more per gallon if you want to try to keep every single type of coral if you want to keep as um leather softies and stuff like that two to three watts per gallon will actually do with this type of lighting in my personal experience and I've been in this hobby for about seven years with different types of corals and lighting. So, but if you really want to move on to the mother of all light fixtures, what we're looking at here is a metal halide and compact fluorescent light fixture put together with LEDs. Um, the great thing about this light fixture and also uh, many compact fluorescents and T5 light fixtures will do this as well, is that it, you, you can easily simulate dusk till dawn. You know, it's like you, dusk and dawn, the, you know, when light starts to come out, your LEDs are gonna come on, and then your power compact fluorescent actinics are gonna come on, and then eventually your metal halides are gonna come on. So, you know, you're gonna get that, that uh, dusk and dawn type of effect, which is excellent. You know, your corals will actually feel like they never left nature. But one thing about metal halide systems is that, you, you know, the pros and cons is that compared to, say, compact fluorescents and T5s, you know, compact fluorescents and T5s generally run a lot cooler. So you can actually get away with having a marine aquarium reef system without having a chiller when you use compact fluorescents and T5s and also LED systems which we're going to cover in a little bit but if you're going to run metal halides even a fan and I've seen lots of you do this a fan is only going to really lower like three degrees 
off of, you know, in a hot summer day, your lighting, your lighting could be anywhere between 87 degrees to 91 degrees. So if it's 87 degrees and you add some fans, you know, you're going to, you, you're only going to lose three, three degrees. You're still going to be way above where you should be. Typically, you want to be between 76 degrees and 78 degrees for your corals to do really, really well. So if you're going to have an LED, uh, um, um, a metal halide system, it is going to give you the best par out there, excluding LED systems for a moment here, compared to um, the T5s and the compact fluorescents. It's gonna give you it's gonna give you a really good ability to penetrate deep the lighting into the tank, and you'll be able to keep any and every kind of SPS coral, clams, and and the such. Now, lots of pros and cons when it comes to you comparing uh, metal halide systems to LED systems. You know, I, I, let's, talk about, let's talk about the good things that an LED system has versus a, the, the bad things of the metal halides first, and then we're going to vice versa. So the good things about LED systems is that, of course, you don't have to replace the bulbs as often as you do with metal halides. On a yearly basis, you, you need to replace the bulb. Each one of these bulbs is anywhere between 40 bucks to 60 bucks to 100 bucks, depending on the type of bulb that you decide to get. So with LED systems, LED systems can last anywhere between seven to 10 years without you having to replace the bulbs, and that's a major plus. Another thing that LED system has over metal halides is that um, the heat issue is non-existent when you when you're dealing with uh, LED systems you know and, and that is that that's a plus in itself right there you know um, with metal halides highly recommend you to get a chiller you know even a fan is gonna give you nothing but problems but with LED systems you do not need a chiller and that is a great feature. However, when it comes to me and when I decide to do research online, I really dig myself. If I decide that I want to buy an LED system, which I've done so within the past two years, I really do lots of research. And most people who do research, they actually decide that they want to look into the good things about the light fixture, but completely forget about the bad things. And that's not what I do. I go into forums. I go into places that sell these light fixtures. And if I was to go, for example, to one of these famous online vendors, let's say, for example, Marine Depot, which has lots of customer reviews, I like to click on give me the lowest rating first before I get to the highest. So as to kind of find out what are the, some of the problems that people are experiencing with a, a particular product. And based on my research, which I've done over two years of research, if not more, on LED lighting system, I, you know, I've read so many negative things about people uh, not being able to successfully keep SPS corals for more than a year. The first year, you're gonna get um, a really nice, uh, you know, uh, y y you're going to get really nice colors and stuff like that. But after about a year, there is something about the, how should I say this to you guys? The synthetic light, you know, that is being given by LED lighting system that just does not compare to that of metal halides. You know, metal how you want to try to replicate the sun, uh, LED light system is going to give you even more par and lumens. But there's something about metal halides that gives off that heat and everything that really does a great job at replicating what the sun actually does to the corals. And it is just, in my opinion right now, LED lighting system is in its baby steps and I believe it to be the future of, of the future technology of reef aquarium lighting. But for now, in my opinion, metal halides are where you should be if you really want to be successful, you know. Um, if you're going to do some research, go online and um, really look up some of the negatives. Now, I'm running out of time here, so I hope this video has been informational for you. And uh, more videos to come, so stay tuned. And I hope you've enjoyed the video. And if you have any comments, questions, complaints, disagreements, 
uh, post your comment on the box and I'll be happy to answer. New York Stilo signing out. Hope you've enjoyed the video. Peace.